Okay, so uh, we want to take a few minutes uh, and share with you um, both what Intel Israel is all about and then here and we'll help you uh, see the journey that Intel Capital does worldwide and in Israel to identify uh, the next great things, where we want to invest, uh, and how we want to connect to the Israeli ecosystem. Um, and we're quite happy to answer questions if you want to ask anything uh, while we're talking. You're a small enough audience that probably we have time for each one of you to ask a question. So um, if you look at uh, what Intel Israel actually represents, uh, we're first of all the largest private employer in the country. Uh, we have over 10,000 employees, uh, but more important, we create work uh, around the 10,000 employees of more than 30,000 uh, uh, people in Israel uh, because of the ratio that we have uh, for services and so forth. Um, you can see that the employee base is divided uh, between our very large manufacturing facility uh, in Kiryat Gat, uh, which is currently uh, being upgraded to do the next greatest technology that Intel will come with, and the design uh, world, which is made up of a number of branches. Um, <coughs> You may have read in the newspaper that on Sunday we laid a foundation stone for uh, the new great central Israel building that we're going to have, uh, which will house about 2,500 of these employees in Petar Tikva. And obviously our very large design uh, center, design and architecture uh, in Haifa. The effect of all of this uh, and you can see uh, that if we started in uh, 1974 uh, with five employees and uh, in the years since then we have grown so fast, this has a huge uh, impact on the Israeli economy, <coughs> both in terms of the export that we do, both of design, architecture and uh, of the manufacturing. We, it, we are 2% uh, of the Israeli GDP. That is a huge number in a little country. Uh, and every time someone uh, sneezes, we get, I get a call from the Bank of Israel wanting to know what's coming. So having given you a little bit of uh, the background, uh, I'm going to ask Kieran to take us through uh, what it is we actually produce and the journey that we've been on. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. So before we start, as every teacher does or every speaker does, there is a pop quiz. What is common between cherry tomatoes, solar systems, disk on the key, or Intel Core processor? If you don't know the answer, I'm going to ask. Oh, OK. OK, yes. So all of these are invented in Israel. If you didn't know the answer, I was going to ask, where is, what is common with Iron Dome and cherry tomatoes? <laughs> but thank you. So I think with that introduction, I just want to walk us through what Israel has delivered to the world. What you see here is starting with 1979. Remember, we started with five employees in 1974. By 79, Israel gave birth to a very leading innovation. And if you look at it, about every three to four years, Israel has delivered a world-changing technology that went into hundreds of millions of homes and desks. This is very impressive. A tiny nation has had a world impact every five years with something that comes and changes the game. And I think it's a matter of pride for this country and the engineering talent that we have. Now, if you look at today, we just don't do the CPU, we don't just do the chipsets. If you look at it, this is all the innovation that's happening right here in Israel. The six, 7,000 engineers that Maxine talked about, they are working on CPU and SOC products, all the compute stuff. The second pillar is networking and connectivity. 
We have innovation labs in wireless, in gateway and broadband for access point, Thunderbolt, a super fast lightning speed connectivity, Ethernet controller. As we move into IoT and wearables and other stuff, we have innovation and research going into sensing and understanding, the 2D and 3D camera going into data analytics, and then security and software. Who will come to Israel and not talk about cybersecurity? We have an innovation lab that's really innovating in the cybersecurity aspect. So overall, Intel in Israel is contributing to Intel's virtual cycle of growth. And this is something that we put in one picture how Intel is driving a virtuous cycle of growth. What you have at the bottom is things and devices, your cell phones, your laptops, your desktops. These are the things that allow you to compute and communicate. What you see on the top is the cloud and data center. The panel before us talked about automotive and the challenges and opportunity. Well, every car that's going to go around is going to generate a lot of data. A lot of that intelligence resides in the compute center, in the data center. So the communication is going to happen through connectivity that you see. The data is going into the server farm. And then the intelligence is going to come back to your cars. So we have this virtuous cycle of growth. And we believe that FPGA and memory play a very important role. So this is the virtuous cycle of growth. And, this, and the pillars of innovation that we talked about in the previous foil, they drive and help drive uh, this virtuous cycle of growth. Now, talking about Intel Capital. So Intel Capital today is the largest venture capital firm that a corporate has. So we, over the years, we have invested over $11 billion in almost 1,500 companies. And we have had lots of success in terms of helping the ecosystem around the world. If you look at the Israel, just look at 2016, we have done four investments and three follow-on investments. And we, our Portco companies have had two exits. But overall, over the years, we have invested uh, a third of a billion dollars in Israel uh, economy and Israel startups. In Intel Capital, we don't just invest in the company and then just hope for the best returns. What we do is, at a strategic level, we are pretty flexible in terms of the types of investments we do. But we help the companies from the inception all the way down to the exit that they may have. We work with all the startups in providing introductions to Fortune 1000 companies. Uh, we provide them with marketing resources, introductions they need to be successful. We give them access to Intel engineering as needed. And then we provide consulting in terms of the exit that they will look for. So when we invest in a company, we don't just look for the returns. Yes, returns are important to every venture capital firm. But we do work with the company at a very strategic level in making sure that their future is as successful as it can be. When we talk about Israel, we have invested in those four pillars in many companies locally here. Today, we have 20 Portco companies. Some of them you see over here. We invest in all the sectors. We invest in cloud and data center, big data, media education, security, and software. So we look at a broad gamut of investment because we believe that the compute and the connectivity requires us to invest and help the ecosystem to go in a very broad fashion. What we also do is what you see on the right side. At a local level in Israel, we have three very unique programs that we are helping the startups with. What you see on the top is Intel Ingenuity Partner Program. It is our startup accelerator. We invite the startups to come work at Intel, we connect them and pair them up with some good engineer and help them with their prototyping, their testing, and help them with uh, their product development. Similarly, we have IoT Ignition Lab. We also opened a FinTech hub at the floor, which is literally a walking distance from here, where we are bringing financial technology firms and startups to interact with Intel and other uh, prominent banks and uh, technology firms around the world. We believe that together with our engineering expertise in Intel and the Intel Capital investments, we will continue to invest in a world of possibilities in Israel and beyond. 
that starts from cloud and data center, goes into semiconductor IP, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all the way down to sports and health. Tada. So, thank you. It was amazing. So, uh, we, will, we will be glad to take any questions you may have. And if you don't have any, we, you can go and eat ice cream outside. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the ice cream, but we'll take any question you may have. Any questions? Nope. Nobody okay. wants, nobody no wants any money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, there is a question. There is one factor that makes Intel successful. You want to take it? You want me to take it? Are you talking Intel in general or Intel in Israel? Israel. In Israel. Oh, okay. Um, the can-do attitude. Uh, we don't believe there's any problem uh, that we can't solve, uh, and we, there's no challenge that we won't rise to take. But we also come from a very strong position of knowledge. The universities in Israel provide first-rate uh, people, engineers, uh, to work on all these things. But if you have to ask what made us grow from five to 10,000, it's that. Yeah, I'm going to add to what she said. I've been coming to Israel since 1992, and I've been here for 40 plus times. And as I travel around the world, one thing that Israel has very unique is the breadth and the depth of engineering talent, and really a passionate attitude. It's, it's not uncommon to have passionate debate till seven or eight in the evening. And that's very, very unique to Israel. So the breadth is there, the depth is there, and the attitude is good, which is why you see you know, three, 4,000 startups in such a small, tiny nation, aside from all the work that Intel does. Any other question? Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you.